Dear viewers, uh, this is a Fidesen TV program. It's going to be on YouTube for your viewing. We are here at Brother uh, Money's residence in French Camp, at French Camp in California. This is Northern California, okay? About 60 miles or so away from San Francisco. It's a pleasure to meet Brother uh, Mani after 20 years and your son Krish um, out here. It's been my wish, my desire to meet him and do this formal interview for our family, for all the friends living abroad. But particularly this one is for our brother Mani. Um, Anil Mani in Melbourne. Yes. Right? Yeah. My brother, uh, Bimbo, known as Bimbo. Right. And um, the brother we're talking about, Anil, he worked with me as a police officer in, uh, in the 70s uh, at Lombasa police station where I was a police sergeant. Um, so we'll talk more about it, but let me hear more from uh, Brother Money. Brother Money, tell us how long have you been here in the United States? 33 years. I came to the United States in 1982. And this is uh, 2003, uh, 2013, it's almost 33 years. 33 years. Now, we grew up together in Rifle Range, Low Toka, right? Yes, that was a childhood, a long time. Uh, the good old days. And uh, who else do you remember from the village of Rifle Range? Uh, especially you, Mr. Anif. Koya, uh, were a very close friend of mine. Uh, I would say a family friend. Right. Just like a family, more than a family. Uh, good old days, we did uh, a lot of things together. Uh, we played soccer, we swim, uh, eating mangoes. Uh, that was a good days and uh, I'm very happy that you came uh, and find out about me, look for me, and then fortunately we're getting together for the interview today. That's my great pleasure and I really appreciate it. And I still remember your family, uh, especially your dad. I had a lot of respect for him, your mom, uh, just like a, a family. They always treat me like their own son. Uh, I don't know, God must bless them. They're no longer with us, but I still pray for their good life. Thank you very much. And this is your uh, son. How old is he? My Chris son, Krishna Mani, is 13 years old. Yes. Okay, and uh, you go to what? High school now? No. No, I'm still in the elementary school from K through 8. So you're in 8th grade now? Yes, okay. at French camp. 8th grade is 11th grade in uh, back home in Fiji. Mm. So you're up there. Soon to join high school and then go on to college, right? Yes. Great. What's your favorite subject right now? Uh, my favorite subject, I have to say science. Science. Great. Anyway, uh, coming back to uh, Brother Mani, we all fondly call him Babu. <laughs> because if his dad called him, his mom called him Babu, so we all call him Babu, which means, you know, little guy or little baby or something like that, you know? But anyway, uh, we grew up in a very friendly, very loving, uh, uh, environment, I must say. We're very close, uh, going to one another's place, borrowing things, and uh, eating together and playing together, as he said. So uh, when we took off from there, you, you came to America, then I followed you. I came in 1985. No, no, first we followed, first we moved. Uh, I don't know who moved first to uh, Suba, you or me? What year you moved to uh, Suba? I went to Suba in 1970, went back to Lodoga, then in 1971 I joined the police department. And then what year we met in Suba? I think it would be around late 1970 or early 80s maybe. Yeah, uh, I think you went first and then I think I follow you and we went to Suba and then you was in the police force and I was a cab driver, bus, and then I joined the company called William and & Gosling and I was a truck driver there and then we built a relationship, you had a family, you was married that time and you had a family and I was single 
and then after that we lost connection and then you came in, and I moved to United States and uh, you came to United States I don't know somehow you tried to figure out where I was and then you finally found me after 20 years and then you're doing this interview that's the biggest biggest um, uh, trust uh, uh, you got treasury in my life. Uh, I would never thought I would see you again and try to go for those old memories, uh, good old memories that I will never forget. Until today, I'll never forget to Rifle Range and Lotoka, the country where I is made my fortunes. And I came here and I still love Fiji and I still love all my old friends. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm quite right, you know, I mean, um, when I met you in Suvar and then we departed, actually when I met Anil, your younger brother, that really made me uh, feel very strongly for you because your brother turned out to be such a nice police officer, so obedient to me. And um, all I had to say is things and he will do it, you know. And uh, when I did a major investigation, it was a very, very major investigation, I picked him as one of my team members. He did an excellent job with us, uh, and he always reminded me of you. Uh, very, very nice of you just uh, uh, to talk so highly about my brother. He's uh, capable for that. He's a very good, uh, till today, he's very proud of himself, uh, always uh, did good job, and he's very succeed in his life with the family. Uh, and he still respect me, still is with me. He always uh, call me and uh, especially he always asks about you. But when he came here, we tried to contact you somehow. At that time I didn't have your number or anything. Mm -hmm. So he really wanted to see you. But anyway, I'm very proud to hear that you're going to Australia and you two going to meet again. Then you guys going to remember the good old days, what you people have done in your life. I heard a lot of stories about you guys. I heard uh, one case I think you people did in Lombasa. He came here, he was telling me that in the night you people used to run over the mountains, or chasing people around, and that was uh, very uh, uh, exciting stories I heard. So it's good for you, good luck, and I think you're gonna go have a good time with him and yeah. tell my love in regards to him. Sure, sure. Even if I don't meet him, uh, I'm going to contact him and uh, even before I leave, I will call him up and uh, if I can exchange the email, I will do that. Uh, but you know, one thing that the fact that he was from my village, the fact that he was your brother, made me so proud to work, uh, be part, uh, keep him at, as part of my team and I used to bring everybody, hey, you know, this guy is from my village, from my city, from my town, you know. And uh, so everybody was amazed. I went, how did you guys do this case, man? So anyway, that was a great, uh, great, uh, that's a great memory still in my mind. And, um, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit, a bit about your parents. I want to say a little about your dad especially. He was a disciplinarian, man. <laughs> yeah, he was a very disciplined, yeah. That's, I'm, I'm very proud to have He taught me because I was, uh, 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 he always wanted to me to do work properly and he was always after me and uh, he taught me a lot of things. He taught me how to do business and then he taught me how to, first of all, he always uh, talk, uh, tell me to son, you always learn how to cook because uh, uh, if you don't know how to cook, you're going to be waiting for somebody to cook your food. Maybe you got married and your wife going to leave you. You're going to be alone. And uh, you better learn how to cook, how to take care of yourself, how you wash your clothes, ironing. And like you know, Mr. Neef, my father, the way he was dressing, I know you yeah. always admire about him. And that was the old days, uh, you know, we didn't have those electric city to iron the clothes. We have those old type. Uh, guess uh, ironing, I, I hope you still remember those. And that was our old days and my dad always up really proud of him. And he brought me up and made me, I wish he was uh, alive today and he would have seen how succeed, succeed I'm in the business today. I, I 
made a good fortune. I made my home, especially my son is with me. And I'm proud that I have it and he always been good with me. And uh, that's why the only thing we cannot bring our mom and dad. Wherever they are, I always pray for God to give them a good uh, life and wherever they is. And especially I miss my dad even these days. I really missed him. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah, one, one, one great thing about um, uh, um, money just touched on, uh, we look up to his dad uh, as a businessman, sharp guy, always well dressed, always well disciplined. He was a taxi driver, the cleanest taxi in the village, in the town actually. We were scared to take a ride on this because it was so clean. We'd, we'd be afraid, hey, you know, if we get in his car, we're going to mess it up. And I was telling him a little story uh, off the record that, you know, one day I was blown away when it was raining and I was wet and soiled. My shoes had all the mud. He gave me a ride in his cleanest taxi around. And there was a great, great uh, you know, f uh, I should say, great love he showed me because of being from the from the same village as his son. We treated, I mean, we treated him like my uncle, my, like, like SM Coe's brother, something like that, you know? Nothing less than that. So, but anyway, those fond memories stick to our me mind and that, in that way, we try and pay a tribute to him and our prayers. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Neef. I really appreciate it, uh, especially for your wife. Uh, the thing the people came here, uh, memory my old, fresh my old memories, especially your wife gave us a good, became a good cook, gave us a good food, we enjoyed the lunch, and uh, I pray God to you guys to have a good future, and God bless you guys. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, the fact that I came out here, I was dead serious, that I must meet you, I know we met like 15 or 15, 12 years ago, then we lost touch again. And I ran an ad in my paper. Uh, I want this guy. Somebody said, well, oh, he's, uh, he's in Canada. Somebody said, we saw him in Modesto. And all, I was getting all kinds of, I don't want that. I want his phone number. <laughs> I want the contract. So incidentally, we you know, recently met at, at, at an event. And from there, uh, we've been talking. Uh, today, I made a point of coming here and keep, get you on record. This is what I'm trying to do. Uh, I don't want to miss you anymore. Okay, so I mean, you're a real dear brother to me, like my Thank other you. young brothers. Yes, uh, that was uh, very uh, nice of you. To uh, very, he says, uh, very few people have that gut, that uh, that heart to. Uh, think about their old days and old friends, and I think uh, that uh, I think in another said I think you one of my oldest friend. I think I have because we brought together, we uh, we we brought as a childhood, and we went to the school together. And I remember we used to play soccer. You always admire about my soccer because one of your friend, one of your cousin brother used to play with me and then I think those are, we were the two best players in our village. Right. And then you always admire about my game, you always talk about it. Many, you, Babu, you played very good today. Babu, you did very good today. So those old days, uh, it's very few people, very few people in this life think of our old days. Because I know we were poor, we were not very rich. I know our parents were farmers and then they became, uh, like your dad work on the FA, uh, CSR, right? I think, right, yeah. yeah. That was the first sugar mill name in Fiji, uh, Conolil Sugar Refining Company. Right. And your uncle, Mr. S.M. Kwaya, was one of the top lawyer in Fiji. I think he went and fought a couple of cases in overseas to, I heard about it. But I think, to my knowledge, to my experience, there was a no lawyer like uh, S.M. Kwaya. And I'm very proud that you're carrying his name and you're doing so good. Uh, I feel proud that you're doing all these and you still keep in touch with us. And that's a very good of you, Mr. Neem. And I will 
forget and I really appreciate that. Thank you very much and uh, just a closing remark on the soccer thing. Uh, I was never a good, I was a bad soccer player with it. I was their enemy in the soccer. But I enjoyed, I, I think by being associating with you guys, you and Ayub and his brothers, and I was so proud when I saw you and Ayub from our village made it to the professional level. Yeah. And guess what? Uh, that thing remained in my mind. So when I was a school teacher, I just... Uh, focused on what I learned from you guys and when I was given responsibility to run the school team uh, one of my star players was uh, Gopal Krishna yeah who who was my student yes and uh, so I used your techniques your whatever I saw from learned from you to build him up as yeah. a soccer player he, he rose to a big big fame you know in yeah his life. he was one of the he was one of the Fiji's, uh, one of the well-known soccer player. I think he, we worked together. Me and Gopal, we went to, we worked for the company. I was a bakery van driver. I, I hope you remember those days. I used to deliver bread, uh, me and Gopal. And uh, Gopal, uh, I think in Fiji, there was uh, no player like him. He was uh, such a, uh, uh, a good player that uh, very few people could have traced him and he was so good he is one of the legend of fiji till today people always talk about him and they still remember him and he was one of my very close friends and he's no longer with us and i hope i still pray for him too and uh, and he was young he died he was younger than me and uh, well that was the god wish was with people to stay and with people not to stay well that's how the life is but i always pray for my old friends especially about you mr Nif. and i i think um, i never thought in my life that one day i'm gonna sit down with you and with my son and you're gonna interview me for our old old stories i think these stories is beyond 50s beyond 50s and uh, uh, whoever going to listen this tape, you will be surprised what Mr. Hanif had been asked me and told me what we were doing. I remember those creek uh, river we used to call, that's not a river, but we used to call river. We used to swim on those river, play soccer on the field, and then we go home and we get belt because we didn't do our work at the house. Mm -hmm. That's how our old days was. And uh, I'm very uh, proud of you, Mr. Anim, that you remember all those things. And about the mango we used to go eat. And uh, those old days, I don't know, uh, is those days going to come back? I, they're not going to come back, but it's uh, still gold memories to remember. Yeah. And I hope uh, you're going to make this tape, and I will send it to all of my family or friends, and they're going to see. So um, I really thank your wife, especially your wife and you, that you people took time and came and see me. Thank you, thank you. I really you. appreciate yeah. that. And I uh, just want to uh, ask Chris to join in and uh, say a little about yourself. Uh, what else you want to say something more? Uh, no, not really. I have nothing much to say because I'm actually surprised to see you my dad's old childhood friend from a long time. And I'm really glad to hear those old stories you two have shared. Thank you so much. And uh, your dad is, is, is not a high school graduate or college graduate, but he's got a lot of skills. He's a tough cookie, though. I mean, uh, he has his own things the way he likes to do. Uh, and I think any, anybody who is goal-oriented, who wants to succeed in life, they are kind of, you know, hard pushers. They want to set their mind to it and get it, you know, and uh, that's the kind of person he is. So. I'm, I'm glad that you're able to relate with him, tolerate to some extent, but eventually you'll come out a winner in your life. You'll learn things, okay? That's the only, yeah. only son I have, and then uh, 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 God, I, 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 pre, I really um, thanks God that he gave me that image and that power that I came in business. I, was a very, I am a very successful businessman, I got 40 unit apartment, I had a gas station, liquor shop, and a house, and a little farm, that which you came and see today, 
and you were questioning me about all these things and uh, I, I, I give thanks to my parents, the parents who brought me up and they gave me all that uh, image and uh, they taught all that thing and I'm here today because of my parents and plus God and especially for you Mr. Anif that you have uh, came long way and the long memories you brought and I hope uh, we're going to keep in touch like that in future. Thank you, definitely. And once this um, thing goes on YouTube, we're also going to get a DVD cut out so we can distribute to friends and family members. Dear viewers, thank you very much for tuning in with TV, uh, Fijison TV. Thank you and have a great day. Okay, we are now at your uh, farm, right? This is your, uh, uh, what is this? Your goat farm? Okay. Good viewers, we are now in Lenny's uh, farm chicken and uh, we picked uh, uh, a lot of eggs mm -hmm. uh, which my son helped me picking up the eggs and then uh, we give it to the friends and sometimes we sell it to my tenants. Okay. Uh, now this is fine because you, know, you don't have uh, a huge, uh, what do you call it, herds of uh, animals right now. Yeah. You have a plan to grow? Uh, that's for my personal use. Uh, you have the 48 acres food. land uh, which was supposed to be converted into a, a truck stop and uh, somehow I didn't uh, had a luck and I think uh, the, there was a uh, uh, zoning, zoning yeah. little mistake which I made. Before buying I did check the zoning but now I'm uh, planning to make a park or Soccer field. Soccer field, you said, okay. Yes, uh, you so. know, always I've been a friend of soccer, so I've been thinking that I'm gonna have a soccer ground. Okay, so that will require rezoning, right? Yeah, rezoning, and then I have to get a permit from the county, mm -hmm. and then uh, then we'll go from there. Uh, is it a long process? And uh, yeah, it maybe take, I mean, I think uh, it's been ongoing for the last two years, maybe, maybe. In a couple months, they'll give me an answer, yes or no, or they're going to give me some kind of an idea of what I can do. Okay, great. And again, right, congratulations. I'm so proud that you're from my village. You came from Fiji and you made it here. You were so successful. And uh, it's, it's a reason for us to, you know, what they say, follow and copy and uh, emulate you. you know? So I really, I'm really proud of that. Thank you, Mr. Nif, and thank you very much that you have took some time for me. You and your family, I really appreciate that. And I think in the future, we'll be seeing each other, and maybe one day you're going to come down here. We might, uh, like as your wife said, is, uh, like some ducks, and you like uh, goats, and maybe one day we slaughter one goat, sure. and then uh, halal some goats, and uh, we can have a little party, I think. Sure, sure. Maybe next Eid we can celebrate. Yeah, that would be a great yeah. thing. Okay, so we'll go there yeah, and, and look inside the, the apartment. Yeah. Apartment.